So I think I've discovered probably the coolest invention, you know, at least in firearms related stuff that I've actually seen in a really long time. Kind of like this love-hate relationship with AirPro. I mean, obviously I love it because of what it does. It protects my hearing, um, but I hate it because it just never quite works for me in the way that I operate. So for example, my, my first set of, I guess, quote unquote, real AirPro that, that wasn't foam earplugs, where are these guys, right? These are the Howard Light Impact Sports, and I have had these since I started the YouTube channel in 2016, and they've held up really well. All I've had to do is change the batteries maybe once a year. Now with AirPro, you kind of have two options, right? You got like over the ear or in the ear, and then you have electronic or just standard plugs. But in this case, these are over the ear and they're electronic. And I like this because whenever I'm out in the desert, I'm usually by myself, and these amplify your hearing so you can hear footsteps from any direction. You're almost like Spider-Man. You can feel your spidey senses tingling behind you as you're shooting. But these have two big flaws. The first flaw, the noise reduction rating is only 22 decibels, which isn't quite enough when you're shooting rifles. Con number two for these is when you have them on and you're shooting, say, a rifle, when you come up, it gets hit right here. And when you have recoil, it breaks the seal around your ear. So even if these had a noise reduction rating of say 50 decibels, it would be useless with a rifle scenario. Now I have tried other over the ear ear protection and the problem that I found with all of them is I don't know if it's the way my shoulders and my head and everything shaped and put together, but I can't find any that I can shoot a rifle with without breaking that seal. So typically what I do is I take some plugs put them underneath here so when that seal breaks, I don't lose my hearing. Over the past couple of years, I've switched on and off between different types of plugs that I use. Back in 2017, I started trying to find some in-the-ear electronic ear pro. I stumbled upon this company called Eddie Modic. They sent me a pair. They were very similar to say like Apple AirPods, except they weren't rechargeable. They had a really good noise reduction rating, which was actually higher than my over-the-ear plugs, but the downside was they took hearing aid batteries. And if you know anything about hearing aid batteries, they have this little plastic tab you pull off that exposes this tiny little hole. The moment you peel off that tape off the back of the batteries, they are discharging, regardless if you're using them or you're not using them. And the downside to that is whenever you use hearing aid batteries, you're swapping out batteries every week, whether you go to the range every week or whether you don't. It doesn't matter if you take them out, they still are discharging. Some people have said you could put the piece of tape back over them, but that's a lot of work. So I kind of gave up on electronic buds, you know, for ear pro. And then last year I tried these guys, which are called decibels, and these are molded in the ear, ear pro and they're passive, they're not electronic. And the way that these kind of work is they let in some of the ambient sound, and then when there's a percussive sound, the little thing inside shuts down and doesn't allow it in there. It's pretty genius. But the downside to that is it still muffles your hearing. And whenever you're outside shooting, maybe you're in the woods or out in the desert like I am, you still wanna have heightened situational awareness. So I've kind of been stuck in this little setup here. I wear these when I'm shooting just the rifle. And then I wear these on top of them to amplify my hearing even more, which it's just, it's just really cumbersome to be really honest with you. And then I discovered these guys. These are from a company called Axel. I'll actually put a link down in the description where you can pick these up if you want to check them out. They got tons of different models, which we'll cover in a second. But these are called the Ghost Strike Extremes. They're electronic ear pro that go in the ear, that are rechargeable, and they have a noise reduction rating of 29 decibels. Let's dive up close real quick. Let's take a look at them and let's see if these are actually worth the crap or not. You know, the way I like to do these reviews is I like to give you a real world experience. And the way I like to do that is I put myself in other people's shoes and say, hey, if this was my money and I bought this, is this something that I would buy again or not? All right, so let's unbox these together. I've actually opened these and tested them, but I put them back in the box just to kind of show you what it looks like when you actually receive these. Um, on the front, 
you know, it tells you the name. Uh, these have Bluetooth on them, so you can listen to music, which we'll talk about here in a second. And then they have the noise reduction rating of 29 dBs, which is really good for Electronic Ear Pro, especially in the ear Electronic Ear Pro. Let's pull these guys out. It opens up like that. I guess if you're into unboxings and Oh my God, the packaging. I ain't gonna lie, guys, I'm gonna be really honest. Packaging is one of those things I can take it or leave it. On one hand, I understand why people like really good, beautiful packaging because when you get the product, you feel like they care so much about their product that they gave it this beautiful case. This, on the other hand, you could probably knock 20 or $30 off the price when they don't invest so heavily in packaging. Anyways, nobody really cares about that. Let's get to the meat and potatoes on the back here. You can see what they look like. They are corded and tethered together and you see two little switches. It says up to eight times normal hearing and full surround sound. Has advanced auto blocker that shuts off all sounds over 85 decibels. Has Bluetooth 5.0 connectivity, 12 hour battery life, and they're rechargeable. And it only takes one and a half hours to charge these from completely dead to completely full. You have two types of tips. You have a silicone tip and you have a foam tip. We'll go over that here more in a second because the tips have different noise reduction ratings. They said that they're patented to fit all ears so that there's multiple ways that you can fit these into your ears and they're sweat proof against all your activities. I actually got these back in, I think it was around July. I spoke with the owner on the phone. We had a great conversation. The owner of this company has actually been in the hearing aid business for his whole life. Like that's been his career. And his job has been to create high-end hearing aids and ear pro. And I gotta say, you know, the stuff that the guy was talking about was kind of going over my head. I didn't quite understand it, but I knew enough about what he was saying to understand that he knows what the heck he's talking about. And his whole goal is to just make great ear pro that you buy once, and then that's it. So let's pull these out real quick, take a look at them, see what all comes in the box. I guess it doesn't matter if I destroy the box now because we're getting the video done. So they come out like this. We have a little carrying case here. We have some instructions. And then these are wrapped around from the back. So you just simply go to the back here, pull this out, push these guys through, and then they come out. Now we get the box off to the side. They don't have the tips on them yet, but here is the actual earbud itself. They are clearly marked also with an R or an L. And that way, you know, you know what side it goes to. That's always important. You see a couple little microphone ports over here. You know, that's to get like noise canceling and all that other stuff. On the side for your right ear, you have your Bluetooth connectivity. You have a microphone and you can actually use these to take phone calls if you like. And then you have volume up, volume down, and then this turns on and off the Bluetooth. You can run these without turning on Bluetooth and you'll actually get better battery life if you do that. But if you wanna hear like some music or you wanna have these set up for phone calls while you're shooting at the range, that way you don't miss any calls, then you can do that. Right here, they charge via a micro USB right there. And then over here is basically how you really function it. Um, you have the on off right here and you have a little LED that shows you when they're on and off and you have volume up, volume down. And that's pretty simple. Also, another cool little feature is we're gonna go over shooting footage and stuff here in a minute and I'm gonna give you what my experiences were like at the range. Something I didn't know when I was at the range was this little plastic piece right here. This little guy is actually a way to take care of all the cordage in the back. And this little thing right here, it just snaps into here like that and you can use it as a way to control you know how much wire you have you know left over and stuff so i thought that was really nice because i didn't know that was there when i was at the range and when we go over the footage in a second you're going to see these kind of flopping around that was initially going to be a con about these but because i didn't see that i'm not going to consider it a con um, in here you have really clear instructions on how to use these it's all very well laid out I should have read these first because it tells you about the head adjustment right there. So in the case, you're going to get your tips right here, and then you're going to get your USB charging cable. I just keep it in there. And then for the tips, you have two sizes and you have two different types of materials. So these white ones right here, these are your silicone ones, you have a medium and a large. And then we have the foam ones and you have medium and you have large. Also, the foam gives the highest noise reduction rating of 29 decibels. And if you need anything above that, I mean, you're probably shooting a Barrett or something like that, or you're probably beside somebody with a really big muzzle brake. You also have this little 
lapel clip if you wanna use it. Personally, I don't use this. I just kind of been keeping it in this bag, you know, in the case right here. To me, I don't really see a point in using the silicones unless I'm just like going to like a concert or something, but for shooting at the range, I go with whatever the most available is. This is what they look like. That's what comes in a box. Let's go over the shooting footage. Let's talk about how you put these on and you know how they perform. Then I'll tell you, knowing what I know now, is this something that I would buy using my own money? Back up top. So let's talk about the different features and actually how they perform you know, in the real world. Number one, the Bluetooth feature is actually really nice. You can use these as wireless headphones and they perform quite nicely, um, especially with music. The bass isn't crazy loud. The bass really depends on how well of a seal that you get with the, the little earplugs right here. The better the seal that you get, the better the bass will be for music and stuff like that. Um, the Bluetooth 5.0, once it connects, it never loses connection. You know, I don't listen to music while I'm shooting just because I don't want to be distracted, but it is nice to have so I don't miss a phone call like if there's an emergency at the house or something like that. That's really nice to have. I haven't really used them to talk on the phone that much, but in the times that I did test it, the call quality was good. I could hear the person on the other end. The person on the other end could hear me. I love that they're corded because when I'm at the range, I can just like take them off, have them hanging around my neck. I don't got to go set them down somewhere. I don't got stuff sticking on my head. I literally just have them right here and then this comes around the back of your ear and this this cord here has like a wire inside so that you can mold it you know so you can do like that or you could squish it make it like that so it stays where you put it i like that so you, it'll fit all your different ears you go around the top here here's how i do it i pull my ear lobe up and then i pull my then i just tuck it back here behind my ear and that's how it looks it's really nice in regards to using the bluetooth your little speaker and everything is right here so when you have this on, this little guy is kind of like dangling right here. So you want that if you're actually going to, you know, use them for talking on the phone. But if you're not using them for talking on the phone, you use that little thing in the back that cinches them up and that will keep them, you know, back here behind you. I didn't know this when I was testing it, but that would have been great. Cause you can see um, when we get to the shooting footage here in a minute that I didn't have them tucked back there and they were kind of flopping around. But even when they were flopping around, they weren't bad. But when they're in this position, it's probably not the best to use them for phone calls because now your microphone is way back here behind your head. So if you're gonna use them as a microphone, you just pull that piece off and it comes up here, which I thought was pretty genius because for this little cord, I couldn't figure out why they made it to where you just tuck this little thing in to have it attached and zip up, now I understand. So if you're going between phone calls and going back out to the range, you don't gotta take this whole thing off. It just literally pops out like that. So now let's talk about how they actually perform at the range. So when I was at the range testing these, I tested them with a multitude of different guns, um, a lot of handguns, a couple of ARs. I did test them with some uh, rifles off camera. Um, one day I forgot my camera, but I had a rifle and I was like, well, I better go ahead and test it. They performed flawlessly. The cool thing is, is going back to rifles. When you have these on and you're just out at the range and you're coming from like low ready or high ready, you're no longer are you going to break the seal and getting that 29 to 30 decibel of reduction is amazing so you now you don't really have to double up unless you're shooting something that's really big like maybe a bear at 50 or something like that I tested it with my 762 i tested it with 308 i didn't need any more ear protection than these provided now with that being said i also wasn't standing next to anyone that has a muzzle break so sometimes when you're standing next to other people that have muzzle breaks you need more ear pro than what you need when you're shooting but i thought that they performed performed incredibly well. Now, the cool thing is, is like I said, they got a 12 hour battery life. That's runtime. Then you simply just plug them in and they're good to go. So the way I've been doing this is I have a micro USB and a charger in my truck. Whenever I go to the range, I always drive my truck. So I just plug them in, leave them there. So when I'm coming back to go to the range, they're already charged. Now there was one week where I left these off the charger, just turned off for two weeks and I went to the range and I was able to have a full range day of a couple of hours and they didn't go down at all. So I don't know what the standby time is, you know, when they're not charged, but they're really, really good. These fill a need that I think a lot of us have. Um, if you don't shoot a lot, they probably won't be worth it to you. These are their middle of the line um, Ear Pro. They have a bunch of them. They have the GS Electronics, which are 139.99. These similar to the extremes that I have right here, also have a noise reduction rating of 29 dB, depending on which tips that you use. So these are the ones that we're talking about today. These are the GS extremes. 
These cost $199.99. These add a couple of other features that the GS um, standards don't have. Basically, the difference between these and the, the ones that we just looked at that were $139.99 is these have Bluetooth. So if you don't care about the Bluetooth, then save yourself some money and get the standard Ghost Strikes. Uh, like I said, there'll be a link in the description for these if you wanna check these out. And they have the GS Custom. From what I can gather here, the difference between the Customs and the GS Extremes, because they're $549 for the Custom, the main difference is you get like a moldable um, custom fit to go inside your ear and they're molded to your ear. It also has something called quad drivers, uh, four balanced armature speakers per side. I'm guessing that that gives a little bit better quality. I don't know, to be honest with you, but to be, to be straight up with you, I mean, that's $250 more for a custom fit. And unless you have some wonky ears, I would say either get the GS Electronics or GS Extremes. And on their site, they also have over the ear pro that are electronic as well as passive. It just really depends on what you want. But I will say this, it, these seem to be the best middle of the range in regards to their prices. So $200 and you get Bluetooth headsets. And the thing is you can use the Bluetooth function independently of the hearing protection. So you don't get all those exterior sounds coming out and vice versa. You can use the hearing protection function independently of the Bluetooth function. I actually have been using these more than my Galaxy Buds. I love my Galaxy Buds, don't get me wrong, but I typically fall asleep with them and I end up losing one of them in the cover somewhere. I can't tell you how many days I've actually fallen asleep with it and then I didn't find it for two days because it got thrown underneath a basket across the room or something when I threw the covers off. So I've been using these instead and for speakers, they work great. I think that the, the Galaxy Buds have a little bit higher music quality, but I like these just as good. So you get headphones, Bluetooth, uh, we're talking on the phone, and you get electronic ear pro. Now let's talk about the cons. So I found two cons that I don't like about these. The number one con that I've noticed is when you are amplifying these, you know, say you're out in the desert or you know, out in the woods shooting, if I go too loud, I get a loud whistling noise and it almost hurts your ears. So I have to turn them back a couple of notches. So that's kind of a bummer that you can't really max them out without getting the whistle, at least during my testing. So maybe I'm a little strange, but you can get them loud enough where you get more situational awareness than I was even getting with these Howard Light Impact Sports. So you get more situational awareness in regards to volume, but if you go to the tippy top, you get whistling type of a feedback noise. Con number two, it lets through way too much treble and not enough bass. And it, it's really hard to explain, but if you think back in like the 60s um, or in the 50s, you know, when you heard radio broadcast or even television broadcast, you always thought people's voices sounded funny. And that's because of the microphone technology at the time. It's not because people sounded weird. It's just the microphone technology wasn't quite there to really bring the person's voice through. And these are very reminiscent of that. So when you hear people around you talking, it's almost like they're speaking through a transistor radio. I, I thought that was kind of annoying. Whereas these, these have a lot of treble as, as well, but these just have a ton of treble. As far as gunshots, uh, they, they block it out perfectly. So I do wish that there was a way that they could turn down the treble or maybe introduce a little bit more bass into the you know situational awareness function of these. Now, with all that said, let's go over the question that I always ask. Would I buy these knowing what I know now? 100% yes. If I was gonna buy these and I was only gonna use them for let's say the range, and I'm not worried about you know Bluetooth, I would buy the standard GS electronics. Reason I say that is I don't really need the Bluetooth function. I rarely use Bluetooth unless I'm in a car and then it's you know connected through Android Auto or Apple CarPlay and I can you know speak wirelessly. That's the only time I use Bluetooth for speaking on the phone. The other reason why I don't really need Bluetooth is you know at the range I don't listen to music. You know, yes, I use these as Bluetooth headphones here at the house, but I already had Bluetooth headphones. So if you don't have Bluetooth headphones already, then maybe you do want to get the ones that have the Bluetooth function. But you know, for just straight up range use, I didn't see any benefit to having the Bluetooth because I don't use Bluetooth on a regular basis for talking on the phone. And because I already have Bluetooth headphones, if I was going to buy these with my own money, I would buy the standard GS electronics, but it, it really depends on you and your situation. But I am curious, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Do you think it's worth spending somewhere between 150 to $200 on EarPro, given that that EarPro solves all your problems and you don't have to double stack or you know double up on EarPro anymore? It's super tiny and compact, so it takes up way less space in your range bag. 
than these. And to me, I would have to say that that answer is yes, but let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. There'll be a link in the description where you can pick these up if that's something you're interested in. But until next time, guys, I love you and you guys stay sexy.